Hi everyone, hello YouTube. This is Lore Council from Turkey. Uh, we are uh, different content creators in Turkish language, but me and Eda, uh, aka Isorlux, we are hello. couple streamers and couple YouTubers, bloggers, whatever you like to say. And we have uh, Ironat, aka Gurkam Nurata. Uh, actually, he is not in Turkish content creators. <laughs> Because uh, he's a writer on Ice Veins, he is writing guides uh, for forms, and uh, he's uh, doing media, social media controller on uh, Instagram, right? We can exactly. say that. Yeah, yeah uh, he is a social media uh, moderator on uh, Ice Veins also, and we have Muratan, uh, aka Kalenia, uh, which he has the uh, half of the theory. We can say that, and uh, we're gonna talk about it uh, on this day. And uh, this is our first uh, content in English. We, we are trying to, to do that. Because uh, of that, uh, we are really deeply sorry uh, for our slashy English. So, uh, without further ado, let's start with Muratan. Uh, okay. We are on you, Murata. So, hello everyone. Give me a second, please. You have all the time. You have. Okay, it's done. So, hello everyone. I am the Lord Freak, a blog content creator for like two years, but I. for. Like six or seven months, I have been doing this in English. I have a couple of theories on Reddit, which some of them are simply boomed in terms of stats, such as my Edun theory. You can check this out in the links below. And me, me and Gurkham, aka Arnat, had an incredible theory crafting. Like unbelievable. a week ago, yes. what? Unbelievable! Big bang! Unbelievable. Big bang! Yes. <laughs> Big bang! It's about what if the first ones are trapped inside the void or exiled to the void? And without further ado, let's say let's begin, shall we? <laughs> what if first ones are the void lords? What if Eternal Ones has once overthrown the original design that first ones have put in place for Shadowlands? What if the designers of the current system have banished the first ones into the void? So they became the Void Lords and so they can't escape from that place but adapted to survive dimension by becoming its lords A.K. the void lords we knew uh, so one, sec one second please uh, you are talking about uh, while saying that the current system not Shadowland, the <coughs> cosmic map, right? the cosmic, cosmic map, system. cosmic map cosmic okay. system okay, thank you so let's go the first one is our new you know, titanic mystery for the Shadowlands and beyond. You know, for years we have we have been curious about the Titans for a long, long time, and finally we have met them during Legion face to face, and they kind of lost their mystery. You know, when he, I mean, hey, Amantul, what's up, bro? It's okay. Hey, I'm on tool. What's up, bro? Titanic after all, right? <laughs> yes. And now the first ones are new, unknown mystery. And if you pay close attention during the Shadowlands introduction course line, the attendance in Oribos, uh, specifically the voice of the arbiter, the hundred voice of the arbiter claims that if Zuval, Jailer, managed to escape through the mall, 
all that the first ones have built would be perished. But what if this is a lie? What if Oribos and the Arbiter were not supposed to exist in the first place but rather have been placed after Zoval has been banished? To, to the move, because Zoval the Jailer is actually the supposed Arbiter of the Souls. I have been talked about this before as well, you can check this out in my blog or read it. Uh, because uh, we also we will also talk about the hole in Jailer's chest and the item in the Arbiter's chest as well. It is the most clear connection about that, that Zoval is the original Arbiter. Arbiter, I mean. And I pass to Gorka from now. Thanks. Uh, so, as Muratan said, uh, we were talking about this uh, theory in our uh, own Discord and uh, it was a big discussion between us and we were building this theory uh, by pieces and after some time uh, we thought about it and uh, let's write it down because uh, this this is too good to pass and uh, I said to Muratan, you already have a blog and uh, you are good with writing so let's Uh, take out headlines and you can uh, write it down and uh, I can edit it later and oh, wow. uh, he wrote a very good text first and then I added what uh, I, I had thought in mind and what I could add and uh, then we concluded it and now we're talking <laughs> about it in video uh, it's already in uh, Muratan's blog uh, lorefreak.com and uh, also in reddit It got very good feedback uh, on Reddit. We are in shock since yesterday. It yeah. had almost yeah. 100 upvotes and uh, almost 100 comments already. And uh, it's going really well uh, beyond our expectations. So, uh, I'm coming back to subjects. Uh, as Muratan said, uh, we are the first and main uh, uh, idea about our theory is uh, what if Zoval is Uh, placed there uh, instead of Arbiter. What if he is the original Arbiter? And uh, the, as Muratan said, the main uh, idea uh, coming from this is the hole, hole on uh, his chest. Uh, and there must be an uh, artifact uh, remained um, placed there maybe by the first ones that attracted souls uh, like the Arbiter. And Uh, probably, if this theory is correct, um, Zoval was uh, taking the mortal souls, free will, and past lives into consideration while forwarding them their new uh, afterlives. And uh, the new system is corrupt because, uh, as we see, the uh, broken system we are trying to fix is based on Arbiter and uh, it's only taking um, the values, anima values of the souls and what can, be, what can they be useful for in the afterlife. So uh, the free will, as Silvana and Jailer has pointed out, is not taken into consideration, even um, broken down and pacified. So, uh, what if that's the original reason uh, the Jailer and Sylvanas were fighting against? And what if Jailer was imprisoned in the first place because of that? So, uh, in, in, let me think about it. Or, uh, Oribos and now uh, the coming 9.1 place, uh, Cortia is sent in between and what if the mall was actually the central place of Shadowlands and uh, Zoval was uh, there to receive the souls and what if there wasn't any Oribos in the first place so they have uh, overthrown the uh, first ones and Zoval they sent Zoval uh, into a prison um, and turned the mall into the place we know today and imprisoned him there and probably if uh, what we think is correct they have 
banished uh, the first ones, the ones who created Shadowlands, into uh, the void to keep them away and uh, to keep these uh, strong creatures, powerful creatures, away from uh, themselves and uh, build a new system to take advantage of Anima. And who did uh, that? What? Who did that? Who banished the, the first ones. ones to void? The eternal ones. Eternal ones. How? We have uh, think of. Yeah, go on. Think about it like in the Greek mythology, like how it was in the Greek mythology, or yes. how it was in the Starcraft. You know the Protoss. Yeah, I know. Kind of. Uh, let's say. Zenlaga. They kind of rise rose up against Zenlaga, their creatures, and they banish them from their world. And Zenlaga basically fled off from them. Also, this happened in the Greek mythology, so this is kind of a common material to use that the creation banishing or imprisoning its creature. Creator okay. story. Uh, this is the uh, center of. Uh, our theory, right? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I am asking that, uh, uh, cause uh, clarify that the uh, eternal ones has capable to banish first ones, right? Exactly. Okay. We see it like that, but but uh, they they became powerful enough to fight against the first ones by abusing anima. Uh, and that's the basis of their uh, rebellion. That's how we think. Yeah. Uh, by by abusing anima and uh, mortal souls, they became extra powerful than they are intended. They While are doing that, they, they used Oribos. No, there wasn't any Oribos. They created. Oh, they were creating. What they're saying is they create create, the Oribos. They, you, abusing the animas, they create all the. Uh, ah, all okay. The, all the, like, okay, I got it. Currently. There was a Mao engine. Yes. Before, now it's Oribos. That's how it is. Yes. And another detail is they did not kill or defeat them. They simply banished them. So they do not need to be that powerful enough. They simply banished them into the void and take into consideration that void is simply inescapable. Okay. I mean, you put them in, push them into the void a bit, a bit, a bit and they are like they are in prison here forever. It's about the... And they probably the are there and uh, the K, K we see, uh, the uh, Archon's key, you see uh, Kyrian key, uh, yes, yeah. taken away from her when uh, Anduin stabs her. And probably those keys are the uh, keys to unlock the void door or portal or something. Oh. Okay. Yes, That's and another another evidence for that Zwal was the original arbiter is can be found in the during the Revendred ending cinematic. Remember okay. that the, our final. Uh, cinematic during the quest line of Shadowlands at 9.0, then Atreus said that this line, every precious drop of anima, and I am sorry that I cannot uh, speak, let's say, <laughs> charismatic like him. No, 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 he is a good voice that. actor. Keep going. <laughs> Every precious drop of anima saw so painstakingly run from the tortured souls of lesser beings now paves the path to the banished one to reclaim what was his. He simply says that the banished one to reclaim what was his, that Zua will take what have been taken from him. And the thing is, nobody take into consideration to this, I guess, because let's say uh, Winter Queen has its own race. Yeah. She created the Wild Hunt and the fa Fairy, Fairy Night Fair, in her own image. Then Atreus has created the Vantir 
in his own image and Primus and Archon so forth. But there are no, there is a not a race in Shadowlands that created in Zwal's image. Oh. Yes, yeah. because that was oh, not. He does not look like him. That was not his purpose at, after all. His purpose was simply to guide and place souls into the dimensions. So he is like not playing it. God. What? Not at all. He he was just a guide. He was like the champion, original champion of the Shadowlands, original arbiter of souls. Yeah. Other eternal ones playing God. Yeah, they are playing God. Yes. Now they, yeah. Now they are playing God because they overthrown the original system and they created this new system to abuse Anima and uh, take advantage of Anima a lot more than intended. Cool. And another strong, so strong evidence that we have is that Cortia, the Massland, Zuval, pull it from the in between at the end of the 9.1 cinematic, uh, including attendance in it. I mean, you see attendance in Oribos, right? Yes. The floating guys, the floating and creepy guys around the, around Oribos, and Cortia consists attendance. Why? It is it was in, in it was in the in between, and there are brokers and attendants inside, and a secret of the first ones, as has been said during the during BlizzCon. Get me, give me a second. Yes, because we think that Cortia. Uh, let's say was the crossroad of the was the original crossroad of souls in the mob. And it was, the mob. it was connected with mob. Uh, probably it was broken away, and uh, probably first ones was uh, residing there, or they they were resting there, or maybe they were uh, using that place as the headquarters when they were visiting the Shadowlands dimension. We don't know that. But it was their uh, place. The, it was the first one's place. Oh. And there is another dimension, just like Mo. What is what makes Mo special? Being inescapable, where the souls are flooded in a river of souls, and being tormented for eternity. It is the void. Yes. The Void just acts like the Mo. Uh, these are similarities with uh, Void and Mo. So much right? similarities, yes. Yeah. And if you think about Chronicles, what Chronicles is, has been saying to the, about the Void Lord, they cannot pass through to our physical universe. And this may be why that they cannot pass because the first one they are the first ones and they cannot pass through the veil they because they are trapped inside the void and also why this explains why the void that has that immense knowledge and claim in the cosmic war i mean they let's say Act like, act like that. We know, uh, we know a lot, and you do not know a fucking shit. Especially the Zotan Zalatat are like this. Yes, and we know uh, the old gods are uh, the servants of the Void Lords. They are not even powerful. They are just uh, pawns compared to warlords. So, uh, if their pawns are these knowledgeable about physical realm and everything going on in cosmic powers, then the Void Lords must be uh, unthinkably powerful and knowledgeable. And knowledgeable, yes. So, old gods uh, are the rich hands 
uh, on outside of the void. For yes, on physical lords. realm. And we think and the Nauru. Uh, we will talk about that as well. Yes. And the Nauru. We so, think the Nauru are directly connected to void because uh, we wait, see, wait, uh, we will get there. Yes, okay. We will get there. Okay, in time. So get us there, <laughs> Muratan. So. Uh, let's take a look at what Muzotan Ashara said about the Jailer and the upcoming sh Shadowland. If you watched Builder's video, you should always should already be familiar about them, but let's read them again. Muzot, it grows hungrier, bolder, alas, your eyes are closed. And what Ashara is saying that treacherous Banshee, do you think I am blind to the darkness you seek to unleash? Now, they looks like enemies, that's true. But our take in this that Zot finds Zual a bit aggressive. Unlike him. He finds him a bit more aggressive unlike him because he and the other old gods are already corrupting, uh, have already been corrupting the world soul of Azeroth for a for an untold time and he did not take it to the chance by Zual simply coming, for, coming from the Shadowlands and claims the world soul this is why they do not like each other but, pretty much, uh, but they are not enemies you must point out this uh... Zoval and uh, the old gods, especially in Zot, are working for the same thing. And yes. at their end game is same, uh, freeing the Void Lords, uh, aka the first ones, right? Do they know each other? Uh, ex explain how they will. Uh, okay. Um, how? But uh, you were going on so fine there, so keep going. And I will uh, conclude in the end. Mm -hmm. And we should also point out that Zual do not want to kill the world soul. I know uh, the community thinks that he mean it to kill the world soul, that that comes to for the soul of the world. But he is not saying that. He just want to claim it. So he can open a, por open a portal to void. To free the first ones. Exactly. And just that's the aim that's the aim of the old gods ah, in the yeah. first place. Just like the old gods, I mean. Exactly. Yes. That's that's where we make the uh, intersection, that's where the lines meet. Because the aim of the old gods and uh, Zoval is probably the same. He's trying to uh, free the first ones, aka Void Lords, banished uh, um, first ones and old gods are trying to do the same and they are uh, trying to claim uh, the most powerful titan ever Azeroth will be uh, after she's born that's uh, what we know already and when they corrupt her or claim her then uh, she will be powerful enough to open the way to the first ones aka void lords Yes, so let's jump into another section, the direct connection between that and void. So, uh, people, especially, no, I better not mention his name, so most of the content creators claiming that that and void are enemies. I mean that that is the antidote of the void. Like, you use that to the kill the void, yeah. and this is, in my opinion, this doesn't make sense, because there are clues, there are clues that says otherwise inside the game. From Valor Soft Renor, I am sorry, but this, from, this was from Valor Soft Renor. Inside the it's Shadow Moon, what? But it is really solid, so... <laughs> yes, these are solid. 
Inside the Shadow Moon Brails Grand Dungeon during Warlords of Fëanor. If you pay close attention to what Orc ancestral NPCs saying, you can directly link the Maw and the Void. Let's take a look. You wait, you wait through a river of souls, stranger. It's best to turn back. This was once a place of peace, a place for eternal rest. And an eternity in darkness cannot escape. So, sounds like they are, like they are talking about the mob, right? A river of souls. An inescapable place cannot escape an, an eternity in darkness. And you hear this. And Shadow Moon Burial Grounds is a place that where the Shadow Moon Orcs blended the magic of death and void together. Because if you pay close attention to the lines of the NPCs posted over there, they use death magic as well. They use necromancy, but they also use void magic. So and most importantly, they gain this proud power from a dark Naru. Yes. Ah, we will get that. That's another connection, yes. We will get that. I know we are very excited about that. Yeah. Uh, another strong connection, direct even direct connection between the Shadow Moon Orcs and the Mole and Dead comes from Troll. During the Mole introduction quest line, you know, the Jailer throws out Bane and Bane like I am Bane lying down on the floor and at the brink of death and Troll saves this. I have seen dark magic like this before among the Shadow Moon clan. The Jailer's minions must have inflicted a similar malady upon Bane. The only cure for the Shadow Moon's curse was to find the object they used to poison the spirit and shatter it. Okay. And Troll simply uh, provides a solution based on Shadow Moon clan. And this is another really strong connection. And it worked, right? And it worked, so we've seen that. Yeah, it worked. I passed the other part in turn. I am fine. <laughs> okay. We see in the comic and uh, before that uh, in game, Aleria uh, gains her power from uh, Dark Naru, you know. She uh, absorbs the power of the Dark Naru. And uh, that's why everyone thinks Void uh, is against um, death magic because she is confronta in confrontation with Sylvanas and uh, they are fighting. But in the comic, uh, we, we see a quote from uh, Void coming to Aleria and uh, Void is warning uh, Aleria against Sylvanas and uh, it says uh, this one is dangerous, she's a threat and must be ended, beware this one. She seeks the death of all things, all possibilities, and her threat, murder her, murder her. Uh, and uh, Void warns Aleria like this. And uh, that's why everyone thinks uh, Void is against death. But that's not the point. Void is against death because of the methodology, uh, because the uh, aggressive way aggressive methods Sylvanas and Jailer are using. They think, uh, they probably think, at least that's what we think, uh, Void uh, was building this scheme and uh, intricate plans and uh, they were slowly corrupting uh, World Soul and they were succeeding, but these aggressive methods to claim Azeroth will ruin that. That's why 
Void is warning Aleria to end Sylvanas, to prevent this aggressive method and to risk uh, losing Azeroth's control. Um, that's what we think. Yeah. So let's... Uh, one other thing, but uh, Aleria is uh, not sure about that either. Not because she uh, she is sisters with Sylvanas, because she thinks uh, this contradicts with her uh, maybe uh, original intent and original connection with the Void. And uh, probably that's why she suggests uh, undoing in the uh, game. She says, Sylvanas commands what may be the only army capable of defeating Muzot for the sake of Azeroth. Perhaps we should stand aside and let her. She says that contradicting with Void's whispers. If she is that connected with Void, then she shouldn't have said that. So uh, that's why we think this is the logical reason to connect both uh, aims. Void and uh, Death eventually has the same purpose and they are trying to free either Void Lords or the first ones. So, dear Arna, dear Görkem, take the Nauru part and we should be uh, faster, I guess. It take took work so far. The Nauru part, the Nauru connection. Just a small tease. It always <laughs> Sorry comes, about It always comes from Nauru. I don't know why. They're everywhere. Explain the Nauru connection. Okay. Oh, on me again, I guess? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Uh, now, what if the Nauru are not what we think they are? What if they are just like the old gods? beings that are sent by the Void Lords, aka the first ones, to infiltrate mortal physical realm and to set the beings of these reality on a path of light, you know, in brackets. Because uh, we have seen light is not all good. Uh, that's what we mean by brackets. What if when adapted to the dimension of the Void, the first ones created Nauru for this purpose, just like all the gods. Think it like that. So through them, they would have some effect and eventually some control over the acts of the mortal races. Yet, the problem about this is, as beings original of Void, the Nauru, almost every Nauru seem to have a tendency, almost an urge, to die as a light being. Because... Uh, they are trying to be transformed into their original form, a void god. And we have seen this in Sunwell. Uh, Muru, mm -hmm. a Nauru which has been drained of his light uh, by the Blood Elves, uh, was in a dark Nauru form uh, in the Raid at first. But when uh, we fight her, I guess, uh, it's a she, uh, in the final confrontation, she dies and turns into a void god uh, with a different name, name Entropy. After this event, we see even the game that now canon and uh, it's a very old canon real thing and it's a proof now. Uh, the Naru have a dark side. And after this particular event, we have seen several similar examples happening like that. Uh, the Nauru turning to dark, dark Nauru than void uh, beings. Some had uh, some external outer push, but some were doing that by themselves. And uh, it somewhat explains the extremely aggressive and unexpected behavior of Zera against Illidan too, and uh, Kara in the alternate Draenor. Uh, however, alternate, it's still a Nauru and uh, it, it, acts like every Nauru, so we can take that as canon too. Um, the, but Kara in the alternate Draenor is the uh, same with the uh, Draenor and Outland of our reality. So, so uh, it dominated the entire Draenei and turned them into uh, the alternate version of the uh, Kara uh, using Yrel. Uh, she turned them into fanatic lightbound, and they're they're not good at all. We know about this because uh, if you played through Magar scenario, you've seen how uh, aggressive they were, 
and uh, after turning into a high exarch of the light of the Naru, Yirel was acting uh, very aggressive against uh, Magar. So uh, that's where we see the dark side of the light, even in the light form, how aggressive it can be. So this extreme aggression of a uh, being of light uh, seemed like it was trying to spam the light uh, in them as soon as possible so they can get rid of somewhat uh, cocoon stage and become their original self a powerful being of the void inside the physical realm so uh, the more aggressively they act the, they will deplete their light that fast and become void gods and uh, open the way for void lords again aka the first ones and eventually save them from their banishment in the void. So, so, uh, so. <laughs> first ones or void lords uh, have three methodology to escape from void: Naru's, Old Gods, and uh, Shadowlands, right? With Zoval. Exactly, but uh, probably they weren't expecting Zoval to be freed like this. You mean? free himself like this. Ha, okay, so Void Lords, uh, I mean first ones uh, in this theory, uh, they are thinking to control or controlling Old Gods and Narus, but not the Zoal, right? Zoal doing this in his, his will. will. Right? By his own will, he simply wants to put them free. Exactly, because uh, probably he thinks uh, he was put there by the first ones, and uh, okay. his purpose is to uh, maintain the original uh, design of Shadowlands. I mean, uh, Zoval did not get any order from Void Lords. No, we don't think so. So, let's take lots uh, fast in a bit and talk about Soul Magic, the Eradar, their knowledge, and their knowledge about the Shadowlands, and Right house. So, <laughs> one of the first things the Nauru did when they saved the Draenei from extinction, from extinction at the hand of Archimand and Kil'jaeden and saved them from Argus, they prohibited them to use soul magic. Uh, you can find the details about this in the builders in builders video. It's like one or one and half a year old. You can find it. And it was one of our solid, uh, solid points to think about that Eredas knowledge about soul magic. So. I will not give in so much details that I know, I, as I said, you can find details in the bell of the video, but they uh, Give me a second, yes They have been putting to their access the souls into mechanisms called vigilance and they were using the same technique with the power of their soul engines during after they joined the Legion, Soul Engines and Soul Forge. And considering the Eredar, we must also point out the first warlock ever, who was none other than Archimand. Uh, Archimand could wield Soul Magic, Death Magic and Fell Magic at the same time that our or all that are all directly linked with each other because Archimand could use all three at the same time second yes and the reason why the now approved the use of soul magic for Draenei to use is simple because using souls or anima as a source of power, in our opinion, is the biggest crime 
you can commit against the order of the Shadowlands. It means you will simply deny anima from the machine of death, use it for your own power, and this is why is one of the reasons why Archimand and Kiljaden agreed to join Sargeras and become demons. This way they deny their fate from the mall, let's say. I mean they this way they will not go to the mall when they die, but they go to the matter and reborn. So they save it from an eternity of torment from the mall this way. Because what they what Eredar did and actually what Renai did in the past, they could uh, we cannot be sure about Velen, but what they did was a direct crime against the Shadowlands. So Second. But the Eredar exiles, the Drena of Velen, uh, Drena of Velen and Kure would stay out of this practice, and that way, the first ones through the Nauru would ensure Drena souls to properly journey to the afterlife where they belong in their design, and would not deny would not deny anima from the Shadowlands and make a mention of that. But there is another race in Azeroth that doing the same, uh, let's say, exercise, but involuntarily by denying mortal souls and anima from Shadowlands, the Night Elves. How? I also wrote about this in my book and read it. You can find that. It's been again like a year since I wrote this. Because traditionally and as a racial treat, disembodied December, December spirits of the night elves who have become became one with the forest, they were living in woods, turned into wisps upon that. So simply when night elves die, they simply turn into the wisps. And that way their physical body would perish, but their souls would remain on the mortal realm and keep its existence and use its power to help the remaining night elves. <coughs> I and have seen comments before this. Anima, uh, so does, does, anima does not go to Shadowlands or Void. Yes, they deny the anima. And this is a uh, kind of somewhat traditional way to become this. Because in Ardenwild, you free wisps from the mob. They call it wisps. There is a quest given by you, given you by Yisera. Yisera. I cannot properly remember the name of the quest, but yeah, we know that quest. She wants us to free the wisps from the mob. They still call it wisps. On every week. And after you take them to the Heart of the forest, the other night elves thank them, they become uh, the night elf souls. But they naturally became wisps when they died. Sorry, cat boy. But still, that didn't, that didn't prevent them uh, escaping the mall. So if they are uh, somewhat caught, uh, by uh, servants of the mob, they can still be brought there. So they were uh, practically escaping from the mob. But the thing is, as we think, night elves are destined to the mob as well because of this reason. Because they deny anima from the Shadowlands. For That's the biggest centuries. Point. For centuries. For centuries. It's been a long time, it means. Like when you're telling this, I was like, wow, it started from there. It's interesting. Where? It started from... Uh, from, from the whole It's been there for a long time that we didn't see. It just like comes to us. Like are we... they doing in purpose or... Probably they... involuntarily. Because they were transformed by the energies of Well of Eternity. That's and uh, okay. they naturally uh, evolved into these beings from trolls. Primal trolls. And they gained these power 
powers involuntarily. So they're just using what they have, but they don't know they are denying their souls from ah, Shadowlands okay. by doing so. They are not aware of Shadowlands. Probably not, because they're not going there. Okay. okay. Yes. So I was For saying... thousands of years even. Oh, okay. Okay. So, keeping the knowledge we just mentioned about soul magic in mind, let's continue examining Eredar and Vision. The thing is, the Legion has been using necromancy too. I mean, disorder using that magic. So, there is no clear, direct lines between cosmological forces that I mean disorder cannot use that no way no they can use that they can they use necromancy they know about necromancy or light cannot harness the powers of life no they can so there are examples about that vision using necromancy and the most notable one is killed the sun strider after we kill him at Temple Skip, by Kajedo's order, Eshivara resurrects Keltas and then we kill Keltas again in his undead form, but they use necromancy, they know about necromancy. And considering it was also Kajedo who had plotted to form the Scourge and the Lich King using weapons and armor crafted right at the mall. We can easily assume, assume he had immense, immense knowledge and awareness about Shadowlands and Necromancy. And I also think have a detailed, have detailed articles in the blog that Zuval and Sargeras know each other well, or at least Kiljaden knows him well, and they are allies in some extent. Because Kiljaden simply using armor crafted inside the mall and he plotting he is plotting the using the scourge to invade Azeroth. Hmm. So as a last note, there is no solid evidence evidence about our command being truly dead. However, our final confrontation with him took place inside the TV signature. He still g gave his last word at alternate trainers. <coughs> in the final cinematic. So, we do not think he is dead. And that is one of the reasons why we still... There is a pos strong possibility that we will see Legion in some form of shape. In the future, that not that grand army we saw during the expansion of Warcraft, which or War of the Ancients, but our command is still out there. Red Lords are out there. Pit Lords are out there. Lord Jaraxxus or so forth out there. So except expect Legion, and let's. Add another little theory here. Guys? Uh, okay. Um, I, I guess uh, we can conclude everything we talk about now and... Uh... Shay, no. I mean Shay. Let's say little theory, add a little theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, add it. Add it, please. The of Saigara is unsealed now. Ah, yes. We know that because tides of Golgan and Ed were stolen from them, so... One of the items locating, locking the seal is gone, so the portal beneath Tomb of Sargeras is open at the moment. And, and it's unguarded. And it's, it's simply unguarded because Kreator did not even notice that Ashara killing a goddamn pillars of creation behind their noses. Good job, Kadgar and Kreator. <laughs> exactly. And we know we will see about Natrezim during 9.1. So expect some surprises and maybe expect Sire Denatrius as the last boss of the Shadowlands as a 
Whilst they are here, we, will, we may talk about this later, but you may expect this. We may expand this theory may in future, maybe. Prototype. So, a con conclusion, please. I am drained. <laughs> okay. You drink some water. <laughs> okay, to conclude uh, what we are talking about and all the theory, I'm just gonna uh, tell about this uh, as a summary here. So, uh, considering everything we have been pointing out and mentioning here, uh, we can now vaguely see a certain big, bigger picture about the real intent and current state of the Shadowlands. It was a dimension of reality inside Warcraft universe defining the cosmic power of death. Uh, it's originating from the once untamed power of the souls and we call that anima today. We think the mysterious first ones created a realm of reality to harness and use this power. So uh, the soul energies of mortals would not go to waste away uh, and instead be used to keep this machine of death going. So the mortal beings and their life's exp experiences would be protected from vanishing into non-existence. For the original design, uh, we think the first ones uh, put in work, they had created powerful beings from anima itself to control this place. These embodiments of anima, or as we call them now, the eternal ones, uh, are the controllers of this dimension. So, and uh, please, thing, oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, consider that be their embodiment of anima, consider them like the titans, embodiments of arcane. Exactly, good point there. Uh, we think uh, like this because in the uh, interviews, uh, Ion Hazikosta said uh, they were Titan++ plus plus and uh, in power level. So uh, considering how they are compared to Titans as a creator being, godly being, uh, we think they are formed from the uh, main power of this dimension. So it's anima and they are embodiments of anima, like how the titans are embodiments of arcane, as Muratan said. So uh, the eternal ones, originally, what we think is, Iris is the first one. Uh, she is the fir first created one, and that's why she has that name. She was created originally to be a watcher and she would decide if mortal souls were ready to enter the Shadowlands. And she would lead uh, their way to the Shadowlands so uh, their existence would not perish in the great unknown when they die. Just like what her creations are doing now, the Creels. Exactly. Uh, the Winter Queen, on the other hand, uh, was created to keep the wild souls and the cycle of life in the mortal realms connected to it, connected to Shadowlands in ch and keep it in check. She would guard and uh, guide the beings that were manifesting in the natural order of the mortal life. Uh, and she would uh, forward them to death and uh, turn, the back to, uh, turn back to life again. So keep the cycle going. Again, so the basis of the mortal life uh, that would create the souls would be protected that way. And that was Winter Queen's main purpose. And Primus was the constructor. The first ones created him, uh, <coughs> manifested him, uh, to help them create the realms and machinations of Shadowlands, including the weapons, armors, and defensive structures of Shadowlands to keep the other cosmic powers and possible invaders at bay. And uh, finally, Denatrius, uh, probably was created as the original jailer and the punisher yeah. of evil mortal souls. He would cleanse them of their sins and give them a chance to be useful in afterlife. It is, it, he was the original jailer and the purpose of Reverend was always been to redeem them. Exactly. As Denatrius has been said that has been saying that here do not destroy, destroy we educate yes. yes. think point and that also gives away the original design is different uh, in shadowlands 
there there was no place inescapable there was always redemption and education and uh, salvation for souls so they could uh, be redeemed and uh, be useful in shadowlands and turn good at some point and uh, finally of course uh, when we talk about eternal ones zova uh, was originally we think uh, was champion of death and the most wise of the eternal ones he was the ultimate guide of the mortal souls with the artifact that has been placed on his chest by the first ones and now there's a hole there and he probably would... his key by the way exactly and uh, we think he would uh, with the use of this artifact given him by the first ones he would attract the normally dispersed and chaotic mortal souls to himself and then guide them into their afterlives according to their life's experience choices and most importantly free will but at some point we think some of the eternal ones got greedy they rebelled against the order of first ones have put in place and they have overthrown their champion the <laughs> wall and broke this system to enforce their own and by perishing countless mortal souls uh, they empowered themselves and by stealing their existence these mortal souls existence and abusing needless amounts of anima they could at last stood against first ones and zova they become powerful that way by abusing anima and mortal souls we think that happened so this rebellion and this new system could happen in the end by doing that they have managed to defeat them zoval and first ones and with their new forms power they have banished the first ones into inescapable void and closed the way back with the case formed from their very beings and that's why what we see uh, in kyrestia archon when uh, she gets stabbed by anduin uh, aka jailer of course they uh, but the first after the first rebellion happened they destroyed the once cent central realm of shadowlands uh, the place they uh, destroyed the place and they divided into two and drew one part into the mists of in between it, uh, it had knowledge and remains of the first ones on it so uh, when thrown into in between it would not be questions or later those facts wouldn't be learned and they have sunk the other part and made it into the mall and imprints, imprisoned Zoval there. Uh, ironically, in uh, his original controlling place, now he was imprisoned and uh, their brother and once leader now forever became the place's jailer. So, so. Uh, there's a quote here. Uh, Primus has said, he said, ages ago, the eternal ones punished our brother Zoval for his treachery. He was bound within the inescapable maw to be forever, forevermore its jailer. The, the trick here is uh, treachery. Probably uh, the eternal ones tried to talk Zoval into standing against the first ones and Zoval refused that and sided with first ones and against that they imprisoned him and took him out of the way so they can build this new system where they can abuse anima as they like and become uh, and remain powerful as they e intend to be so the triumphant eternal ones enforced this, enforced this new order to get mo the most power and advantage of mortal souls and anima. Primus crafted a new machination for this and named that Arbiter and formed a city around her. And now we know that city as Oribos. This Arbiter would not have the conscience and wisdom of Zoval, but instead she would order souls according to their level of anima and usefulness, not their memories or past lives by placing Zoval's gift given uh, 
to him by first ones. Now uh, they placed it inside this new machine called Arbiter and this new flow was built uh, over Oribos. Now every soul would intend instead be attracted to Arbiter and uh, they will be just used like this. And, and mm -hmm. probably the attendants, some of the attendants have been summoned from Cortia to serve the Arbiter. Exactly. Because there are attendants at Cortia. Yes. Right. Or maybe they were uh, created like uh, Arbiter 2 uh, by Primus, yes. like machinations. Yes. They're just servants, they're mindless servants. And uh, when we talk with them, they just babble about the purpose and they act like. <laughs> So, to summarize these eternal ones uh, and their final uh, order, Kyrestia, Archon, would lead every possible soul to Shadowlands to be harnessed despite their time and life to be completed. Originally, she would uh, consider if they are worthy to pass to Shadowlands, otherwise the, she would uh, send them back. And we see that in Spirit Healers. If you are not worthy to die and go to Shadowlands. You just come back to life and uh, go on to whatever you do. The Winter Queen would, in this new system would not need to respect the cycle of life as long as she could harness the most souls from life, even wild or, you know, connected to life or whatever. She would do whatever necessary to gain most anima from those beings. And that's what we are seeing now in Ardham world. And Primus would now be totally free to use all the necromantic powers to ensure his machinations. Normally, uh, we think he was forbidden to do that because to, do, to cast necromantic magic, you, mu uh, you must abuse life and uh, mortal souls. You have to use soul magic in a dark way to uh, ensure necromancy and primus was free to do everything uh, after he was free of these rules yet eventually uh, this unjust order would be broken because that was not meant to be changed as zoval has said with the secret help of denatrius because we think uh, he was uneasy about this uh, new order, but he just acted like he was with them to uh, later help uh, Zoval and first ones eventually. Um, Denatrius helped Zoval and uh, with his beating, with his dreadlord servants, he managed to reach into every cosmic power and gathered allies. And through the use of these mortals' help, Zoval managed to break the purpose of Oribos and his jailers and broke Arbit. And uh, he managed to direct the souls back to himself again, as originally intended by first ones. Eventually, we think, he plans to gather all the keys and with the help of the most powerful Titan soul, he will open the way back to the Void and free the First Ones, aka Void Lords. But the problem is, while Zoval was jailed, too much time has passed. And the First Ones that created him may not be the ones he has once known anymore. It's so scary. just think about it. <laughs> yeah. It's scary. Oh, yes. Ta-da! <laughs> and that's it. <coughs> we know terror. that I loved it. took I loved a little. This. We know that took a little long, but uh, this is a real long theory, and we hope you will enjoy when you will listen, listen this, and do not be, let's say. Uh, Terrorized from our <laughs> no, really. no, no. bad English. <laughs> our it's, pronunciation it's well was well English. No, it was, was it was very well. Thanks. Thanks. 
<coughs> so, here oh, we yeah. are. We may it's... do it again in the future in a more professional way. Yeah, but yeah, encourage no us, right? <laughs> so, yeah. uh, and please let us know what you think. It's the end, or is it? Right? I don't know. It's not the end. There is more coming, I guess, after this. <laughs> but so far, it's end. Yes. Fellas, uh, let's see you later. See you later. Thank you for listening us. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you from Turkey. Thank you from Lord Council. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. Bye. See ya.